This behind me is one of the only crane hotels in the world. And I'm going to be spending the night in it. Because over the next seven days, I'm challenging myself to stay in the weirdest and most unusual hotels all around the world. Starting with a night inside of an igloo. It's negative outside. And I'm freezing. Let's go check this place out. And what's inside an igloo on top of a mountain, you ask? Some light. But hey, it works. An ice sculpture of a woman. At least I have one person staring at me tonight. <laughs> I'm so lonely. And my bed. There's not a mattress. So they gave us little fur blankets to sleep tonight. And a sleeping bag. I don't think it's actually gonna get cold in here tonight, right? Spoiler alert, it did. So it's a good thing that this is just one of the weirdest hotels that we're gonna be staying at all around the world. And our next adventure is located in the country of Baguettes. Yep, that's right, we made it to France. And this next hotel is so crazy that I flew out my entire family to experience it with me. The twist? No one knows where we're actually staying tonight other than me. We are on our way to our first unique hotel. And we have been driving for about three hours in the middle of France. We're basically gonna be sleeping in the trees. You'll see what I mean in a second. Not only am I in France right now, but behind the camera is my sister, my dad, hey. and my mom right here. Where do you think we're staying tonight, guys? All I see is trees and a beautiful white mountain. Hoping there's a beautiful chalet just around the corner. Let's go see. We're at the tippy top of the clouds. Do you see that? Those are the clouds. It's locked. Apparently, we have a quad. This is what we're taking up to our room. Can we fit four people in here? Are, is there seating in the back? Let's go to the car. We are putting on our snowshoes now. Are we staying tonight? Let's do and it. And the hike to our room started. And we kept getting deeper and deeper into the forest. I think they may have gotten the hint. Tonight, we're staying in a five-star treehouse complete with a hot tub, slide, that was awesome. and a bridge, which gets very icy. And it is the only way to get into this house in the trees. And I may or may not have slipped like 20 times trying to get to the room. And in this hotel, the food gets delivered straight to our doorstep. And another cool feature about this hotel is it comes with two free meals. With the first one being fondue, which we found out is so much harder than just melting cheese. And breakfast in the morning. And you request what you want them to bring. Now that's what I call luxury. But there's a little something small I've been hiding from you. The room that I'm showing you? Yeah, that one. It's actually not even where I stayed last night. Last night, I stayed in the nicest and most expensive suite they had to offer. It's 100 feet up in the sky and comes equipped with just about anything you could ever want in a treehouse. I realize I've been in my parents' room the whole time. So let me give you guys an official room tour of my room up here in the sky. The dining table. Obviously. Our heater. My bed. This is my favorite part. Check out the bathroom. Look, everything's made out of sticks. We are literally in a tree house. But there is something on my floor that I haven't tried yet. I've been terrified too. We're 50 feet up in the sky. I feel like the whole thing's gonna snap. I'm dreaming right now that I'm in a hammock on the beach, except it's negative 32 degrees. I'm, I can't do this. Okay, that was really scary. I don't want to do that again. Check out the roof. We're coming up now. Oh my gosh. Look at how sick this is. No one's even touched any of this. But the coolest part of this whole thing is I got to meet the builder and creator of this small town of tree houses where he showed me a secret project he's been working on for the last couple of months. Here you have the moon. <gasps> the... What? There's <laughs> not starlights. That is so sick. And gosh. the moon at night, it reflects on the mirror. So you have the moon <gasps> right in front of you. So we decided to take the luggage down the tree house in the most logical way possible. The slide of course. All right, so both of us are pretty scared to go down this slide right now. So we're gonna do odds to see who goes down first. So, okay, let's do this. Uh, one out of 10. Three, two, one, six. six. No, she has to go down first. Bye, Amanda. <laughs> Woo! Oh my God. Oh God. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Wait, was it fun? <laughs> Good I thought Lord. she fell off the edge or she was screaming so loud. Good Lord! Are you sure there's no other way to get down? No, there's no other way to get down. All right, three, two, one. Oh gosh! Woo! Oh. Yes! Everybody else has made it, so it's gonna be good. Yeah, it'll be fine. Be it'll be fine. I don't think it's painful at all. All right, ready? Three. No, it's not painful. Does that mean it's painful? Two. That was fun. All right, here we go. Three. Two, one. Oh gosh! Oh my! God. But these are only two of the crazy hotels that we're gonna be checking out in this video. Later, we're gonna be staying in a crane, a hotel that's completely made out of glass, and so much more, with our next one being a real gondola. Where am I walking? Okay, be careful, be careful. In three, two, one. 
we're staying in a gondola tonight. <laughs> Wait, what? Let me show you guys what we're dealing with. Tonight. To be honest, there's only really one room, but just staying in a Matterhorn Express gondola does come with some amenities. A heater, power strip, a nightlight, but that's not all. Well, I found some storage where you can put backpacks. I would say this gondola suite is designed pretty well. There's even a welcome mat. And after we settled in, we decided to explore the farm we were staying on, which appeared to be run by oh. cats. No, like we didn't see a single human and there was zero check-in process. But that was until we found the coffee bar. And as we were trying to figure out how to make a nice hot cup of joe, Hello. We met our first friend on the farm. And just as things were starting to look up, it got dark outside. At night, it's a little bit scary, but it's also so quiet that it's almost peaceful. And I also had the pleasure of exploring the bathroom situation for the first time. And right as we got back into bed, we saw them. spiders. Now, I'm not super scared of these cuties, unless they're like really big. This was Amanda's worst nightmare. It's so big. I don't think I've ever seen a spider this big. I'm not trying to scare you. No, I, I can't look at it. <laughs> it looks like sleeping here tonight isn't gonna be as easy as we think. One after another, they kept spawning in our gondola. And I'm not proud to say it, but I had to call my dad. But then we woke up to this. Literally the prettiest view of the Swiss Alps ever. And our next hotel is gonna be the craziest one yet. So after enjoying the view, we packed our bags and flew to Amsterdam because we have made it to our next hotel location. But believe it or not, we are actually staying in this crane behind me. This is one of the only hotels in the world located in side of a crane. The only way to get to the top are two elevators located on the right and left side. And the suite that we're staying in is located 164 feet in the air. The twist? I hate heights. I can barely do roller coasters. This is probably going to be torture for me. But today, I'm going to try to break my fear of heights by staying in probably one of the highest hotels in the entire world. Let's go see what this place is all about. And after going up not one, but two different elevators, we arrived to our suite 164 feet up in the air, where all you could see are the best views from Amsterdam and the pure terror on my face from being up this high in the sky. But that didn't stop me from giving a room tour. Well, let's get today started. The bathroom's really nice, though if I'm being completely honest right now. Let me take you upstairs. We also have a bathtub. We have our beautiful bed right here. But to do that, I need some fuel. And lucky me, the Crane Hotel came with an interesting selection of foods. Macaroons. Four to be exact. Which were gone in about two seconds. Peanuts. And my favorite chip ever. Ringles. That just got some brownie points for me. And as I sat in the living room enjoying my chips, staring down at the floor 164 feet below me, I started to wonder how I gaslit myself so hard into thinking this wasn't going to be scary at all. Maybe we could get some answers from the owner, Ed Win. All right, I am here with the owner of this crane hotel. Edwin, Cormel, really. You have to be a little bit mad to do something like this. This is this is crazy. You have to be a little boy. This is a crane, and I restored it and redeveloped it into a small hotel with a studio where DJs play. So crazy. All right, so I just got the text from Owen that he is downstairs, and we are going to go grab him right now. But that means that we have to go down the elevator again. Hey, guys, we are currently in the elevator. 164 feet up in the sky. Dude, look. Look at how pretty this is. So it looks like the sun is almost down here. I'm very interested to see what Owen thinks of the Crane Hotel. Let's go down to the first floor and go grab Owen. And his first emotion when he saw this place was pretty much the exact opposite of mine. Pure excitement. All right, welcome to the Crane Hotel. Bro! Wait, this is crazy. Mom, I'm in a crane! Whoa. Oh, I shouldn't have looked down. Up here, we have a pretty cool um, gold toilet. This is the coolest place I think I've ever been in in my life. And that doesn't just go for hotels. I did the hard work. I found the place. Wait, I hold hold on. Hold. The whole brain almost fell apart when I bought a crane. It took two years to make the plans, and the municipal had to say, yes, okay, this is okay. The secret suite is the original machinery room, and actually the whole machinery room was rotten. So the only thing I could restore was the door. Everything is totally new, but exactly how it was that time. And as it started getting dark, me and Owen got pretty hungry. And we had this brilliant idea that we thought that we could get pizza delivered to the very top of this crane. I don't think that they're expecting other to mean a crane. I don't know if anyone's ever delivered pizza into a crane before, but I think this delivery driver is going to be the first. If we can actually get him to come up into the crane, that would be insane. I actually had to walk 10 minutes away from the crane hotel because the dude thought that where I was staying was an empty parking lot. Oh yeah, and we decided on chicken sandwiches, not pizza. But as I was eating my food, I realized there was still one part of the crane that we had not explored yet, the hot tub. Now, according to their website, there's a hot tub on the roof of this thing. And with no swimsuit and the temperature being below free, we want to explore. We're going up to the fourth floor right now. I'm freaking out. <laughs> I can hear banging. I, I I don't even know what's going on. Oh, I think we made it. Oh, it's windy. We are actually on the top of a crane right now. This has got to be one of the prettiest views <laughs> I've ever seen. And just as everything was going perfectly, the elevator door broke and we were stuck on the top. I'm joking. I'm joking. Or am I? 
I'm also getting pretty tired. I think I'm gonna go to sleep. It is the morning time, and I wanted to make some coffee before we leave here. And while it's heating up, let me tell you about last night. We were exhausted. And at 10.15, when I was about to knock out, the owner actually invited us downstairs to a little party he was having. This hotel also doubles as a concert venue. He texted us super late. We ended up just literally knocking out immediately. And I woke up this morning kind of wondering, what would that party have been? But I'm gonna drink this coffee and we are heading to our next hotel, which funny enough is also in Amsterdam. But I will see you guys at the next unique hotel. But right as I was about to walk out the door, well, actually elevator, you will never guess who texted me. Big surprise. Where, is, where did you just go from? This is suite number one. This is, I mean, even like the colors and stuff. Oh, the lamp, uh, this, is, this is sick too. He started showing us around suite number one at the Crane Hotel, which was just a little bit cheaper than ours each night. And as we gathered our last couple bags upstairs, Edwin is dope, dude. Like, <laughs> he's genuinely just showing us around like, like we're some friends. Apparently he was up last night until 8 a.m. partying. He also said he has plans of owning kind of a crane army. He wants to own more than just this crane. LA would love this, so who knows? Maybe there's gonna be a crane in LA soon. All right, well, to finish this off, if you had one message to the world, what would it be? If you want to solve a problem, please get a courage to communicate or solve everything. Edwin, you have been the man. Thank you so much. Last time officially taking the elevator. We are saying goodbye to our beautiful crane. Probably one of my favorite unique stays by far. On to our next. We have made it to our next stop. JT, where are we staying next? Well, you probably won't be surprised. Tonight, we're going to be staying on a houseboat. And believe it or not, it's actually not the one that you're looking at right now, but it's the one behind that one. First things first. We made it. Let me show you guys around. Look, we have a bell. I don't know what that's for. Up here, we have my favorite part. This insane rooftop right on the water and right on the canals of Amsterdam. There's even a barbecue over here. You can barbecue on a houseboat? Oh, also, we have this little space over here. Does this look into the bathroom? This is the captain's deck. This is where you would steer the boat if we took it out on the canal. Pretty cool if you ask me. I can't tell if this is a step. It's actually getting really dark. Ow. Oh, gosh, my back. This is our living room. Our dining table. Houseboats have kitchens, too. This is the workspace. This place is actually pretty big. One thing that isn't big is our bedroom. Let me show you guys what I mean. It's a houseboat bedroom. It's nothing spectacular. But something that is special about houseboats is that it's on the water. And fun fact about me, I get seasick very easily. This is very quickly just turning into a video where we torture me, apparently. One more problem I forgot to mention. Our bathroom does not <laughs> work. I guess I'll keep you guys updated when I start getting seasick. What is there to do on a houseboat for 24 hours? Turns out not a lot. So we booked a boat tour and missed the boat tour. And we walked 45 minutes back home and went straight to sleep. Or at least that's what we wanted to do. Let's do the boat is rocking so much. I'm definitely gonna have to sleep on the plane tomorrow. I'm not getting a hotel because I'm gonna beat this houseboat challenge and I'm never doing this again. I'll keep you guys updated if I actually go to bed, I guess. Good morning, friends. It is 8.45 in the morning. So let me recap you the night on a houseboat. It took me a very long time to fall asleep. That was not fun at all. But I did end up going back to sleep. I truly, honestly, think I would do it all over again. I love the beach. I love the water. I genuinely would consider living on a houseboat. My rating out of 10? A 7. We had to go to the bathroom around here as well. We did not get to use the bathroom in the but boat. there are so many positives about living on a boat like this. All right, I'm gonna go try to catch my flight. I will see you guys at the next destination. So you're gonna wanna stick around. And our next hotel is located in the Arctic Circle all the way in Norway. Okay, so right now we are at Wonder Inn where they have four separate cabins on the campground. These are all glass hotels. Not only are we staying in an all glass hotel in one of the coldest places in the world, but also in a desert. This is the Sand Dune Suite here in Netherlands. And it is definitely one of the most unique hotels I have ever seen. But why would someone ever stay in a truly all glass hotel? Well, these suites are designed where you can see out perfectly, but no one can see in. So you kind of get the best of both. Both worlds. But wow, is this hotel nice. We got our bed here, which uh, I'm gonna be sleeping on. Our table. The kitchen. Look at the floor of this bathroom. It is so, hey, don't, don't look at my feet. Look at the floor. We're surrounded by a bunch of tiny homes right now, and we're gonna be staying here for the next 24 hours to see what it's like living in the desert and in complete snow. And while we got dinner in Amsterdam, back in Norway, we played in the snow for three hours straight and then knocked out. And in the morning, said goodbye to our all glass hotels to head to our final final and definitely most interesting hotel in the mix where we had to fly all the way back to America to visit the worst rated hotel in the world.
but I never thought we'd arrive to this. We flew all the way to Iowa for this hotel and it is completely bulldozed. Turns out Iowa has plenty one-star hotels. And we found the worst rated of the bunch was 47 minutes away. And checking in at 11 p.m. at a one-star hotel went pretty much just as expected. And after walking inside, we were immediately greeted with bugs. We actually only saw a few on the floor. And along with a few dirty towels and a very suspicious light that had a mind of its own, I feel like this place is haunted. I checked for bed bugs. There was nothing. I don't think sleeping here could be that terrible. You just woke up a couple minutes ago. I am exhausted. We could hear our neighbors all night on both sides. We did not go to sleep for a really long time. Believe it or not, bed is actually really comfy. That is at least a two-star hotel for me. It did indeed have free Wi-Fi. 